You've said that we are much less violent than our close living relatives, the chimps. Can you elaborate on this point of uh, how violent we are and how violent our evolutionary relatives are? Well, I haven't said exactly that we're less violent than chimps. What I've said is that there are two kinds of violence. One stems from proactive aggression and the other stems from reactive aggression. Mm -hmm. Proactive aggression is planned aggression. Reactive aggression is impulsive, defensive. It's reactive because uh, it takes place in seconds after the threat. And the thing that is really striking about humans compared to our close relatives is the great reduction in the degree of, of reactive aggression. So we are far less violent than chimps uh, when prompted by some relatively minor threat within our own society. And the way I judge that is um, with not super satisfactory data, but uh, the, uh, the study which is particularly striking is one of uh, people living as um, hunter-gatherers in a really um, upsetting kind of environment, namely um, people in Australia uh, living in uh, a place where they got a lot of alcohol abuse. Uh, there's a lot of domestic violence. Uh, it's all uh, a sort of a, a, a society that is um, you know, as bad from the point of view of violence as uh, an ordinary society can get. Uh, there's excellent data on the frequency with which people actually have physical violence and hit each other. And we can compare that to uh, data from several different sites comparing, uh, we're looking at chimpanzee and bonobo violence. Mm -hmm. And the uh, difference is uh, between two and three orders of magnitude. The frequency with which chimps and bonobos hit each other, chase each other, charge each other, uh, physically engage is uh, something between 500 and 1,000 times uh, higher than in humans. Mm -hmm. So there's something just amazing about us. And you know, this has been recognized for, for centuries. Uh, Aristotle drew attention to the fact that we behave in many ways like domesticated animals because we're so unviolent. But you know, people say, well, what about you know, the hideous engagements of the 20th century? The, the First and Second World War and, and, and much else besides. And uh, that is all proactive violence. Mm -hmm. You know, all of that is, is gangs of people uh, making deliberate decisions to go off and attack in circumstances which, ideally, uh, the attackers are going to be able to make their kills and then get out of there. Uh, in other words, not uh, face confrontation. That's the ordinary way that armies try and work. And um, and there, it turns out that uh, humans and chimpanzees are in a very similar kind of state. That is to say, if you look at the the rate of death from chimpanzees conducting proactive coalitionary violence, uh, it's uh, very similar in many ways to what you see in humans. So we're not downregulated with proactive violence. It's just this reactive violence that is strikingly reduced in humans. So chimpanzees also practice kind of tribal warfare. Indeed they do, yeah. Uh, so this was discovered first in 1974, it was observed first in 1974, um, which was about the time that um, the first uh, major study of chimpanzees in the wild by Jane Goodall uh, had been going for uh, something like five years uh, during of um, the chimpanzees being observed wherever they went. Mm -hmm. uh, until then, they'd been observed at a feeding station where Jane was luring them in to, um, to be observed by seeing bananas, which is great. It, she learned a lot. But she didn't learn what was happening at the edges of their ranges. Mm -hmm. So five years later, um, it became uh, very obvious that there was hostile relationships between groups. And those hostile relationships sometimes take the form of the kind of hostile relationships that you see in many animals, which is a bunch of um, uh, uh, chimps in this case, uh, uh, shouting uh, at a bunch of other chimps uh, on their borders. But dramatically, 
in addition to that, there is a second kind of interaction, and that is when a, a party of chimpanzees makes a, a deliberate venture uh, to the edge of their territory silently and then search for members of neighboring groups. And what they're searching for is a lone individual. So I've been with chimps when they've heard a lone individual under these circumstances, or what they think is a lone one, and they touch each other and look at each other and then charge forward, very excited. Um, and then while they're charging, all of a sudden, the place where they heard a lone call erupts with a volley of calls. Mm -hmm. It was just one calling out of a larger party. Mm -hmm. And our chimps put on the brakes and scoot back for safety mm -hmm. into their own territory. But if in fact they do find a lone individual and they, they can sneak up to them, then they make a deliberate attack. Uh, they're hunting, they're stalking and hunting, and, and then they impose terrible damage, which typically ends in a kill straight away, but it might end up with the victim um, so damaged that they'll, they'll crawl away and die a few days or hours later. So that was a very dramatic discovery because it really made people realize for the first time that Conrad Lorenz had been wrong when in the 1960s, in his famous book on aggression, he said, warfare is restricted to humans. Animals do not deliberately kill each other. Mm -hmm. Well, now we know that actually there's a bunch of animals that deliberately kill each other, and they always do so under essentially the same circumstances, which is when they feel safe doing it. So humans feel safe doing it when they've got a weapon. Mm -hmm. uh, animals feel safe when they have a coalition, mm -hmm. a coalition that has overwhelming power compared to the victim. And so wolves will do that, and lions will do that, and hyenas will do that, and chimpanzees will do it, and, and humans do it too. Can they pull themselves into something that looks more like a symmetric war as opposed to an asymmetric one? So accidentally engaging on the lone individual and then getting themselves into trouble and then a warfare breaks out or is, or- Or oh, you're thinking of a battle. A battle, yeah. yeah. Or are they more aggressive in avoiding these kinds of battles? No, they're very, very keen to avoid those kinds of battles, but occasionally uh, they can make a mistake. Um, but so far uh, there have been no observations of anything like a battle in which both sides maintain themselves. And uh, I think you can very confidently say that overwhelmingly what happens is that if they discover that there's several individuals on the other side, then both sides retreat. Hmm. Nobody wants to get hurt. What they want to do is to hurt others.